This pretty good coverage is brought to you by Power Grip, the official retail partner of the European Pro Tour. Hello everyone and welcome back to coverage of the third stop of the European Pro Tour. This is the 2023 Estonian Open. We are excited to bring you nine more exciting holes where we will crown your champion. I'm Connor Wood and once again with me, Johan Wallstam. It's a tight race at the top as these three women are battling it out with just one score, one score separating the number one and number two at the moment. We'll see who can clutch it out at the end as every hole will have that much more uh, value on it. So let's see how they perform. Every stroke counts at this point. You see here hole 10, par 381 meters. This is one of the more attackable holes here in Kurvama Disc Golf Park. It is a straight to softly rightwards fairway that shapes through these trees. If you can hit all the gaps, you break out into this fairly open green, shapes really nicely for the forehand hyzer, right-handed player. If you're not comfortable with that, you can also play a soft turning over backhand, but the forehand really is the way, and I think a lot of these players here on this card should be comfortable with that shot. Second easiest hole on the day. This is definitely one you want to pick up especially now in the third round, as you see Kaidi shooting it to a great spot, uh, a little bit far there, uh, but she'll be putting just on the circle's edge for her birdie. And we know that Tele is confident with her forehand. She'll be going for this one. A little bit low. Can it get to some ground play? And it does. <laughs> that is nasty. She catches the flare off the edge skip, spins it up the hill and parks it. That was just uh, an yeah. incredible result off that ground play. Beautiful. It really it was last second there before, to Heiser out to get the ground play. And we see Anneli here. Good looking shot. Hits a little tree. Uh, but that's a good result for her as well. Right in her putting range. So far, three out of three in the circle. Christina. She it goes brings a bit more inside. In. Yeah. Not enough turn or width through the trees. She will find an obstacle. I think a jump putt approach now remaining for her. Or even, oh, very obstructed. She'll have a short forehand hyzer. And she catches a branch on the way. That'll be a Tough putt to get for par, and she's still up. Just inside the circle, nine and a half meters, but only three strokes here on hole 10. Great putt to save par. Yeah, great job by her. Only here, keeping up the putting performance in the circle. She picks up her birdie, and she needed that one. This is Kaidi to maintain her share of the lead. As so that is also dead center. Two fantastic putts from Circle's Edge. Both those ladies battling now for these podium positions. Tele, closest of the bunch. Short putt for her birdie. Taps it in nicely. You can really see the competition here. I'm very impressed by their putting and you can really see their really fighting it out some great composure very professional play hole 11 par 3 120 meters an absolute bonus birdie shaping uphill through a tunnel shot the entire way you have just an endless amount of trees that you need to beat while maintaining turn and glide as you make your way up to this basket really good drive will often leave you with a late c1 or c2 putt very rare to get all the way given the distance uphill and the demanding shape a three is totally fine here but as we mentioned the holes are running out and this could be a significant score separator as we go down this back nine from second easiest to second hardest this is definitely one you want to think about your risk management management a little bit about as katie she finds one of the center trees and kicks into the woods this, even though there's only a few holes left, this could definitely make or break your round. So, curious to see if 
uh, how aggressive they get on here. As Taylor, she does have this kind of distance in her wheelhouse. She goes for a high pushing hyzer and gets a fairly fortunate result there hitting a tree. She have, she'll have a pretty open look uh, for her par. Yeah, I think she'll lean on that solid forehand approach that she's shown to be so comfortable with. We see Anneli going for the forehand here. She has a ton of power using an overstable disc. She's playing towards that open right side, leaving herself also similar to Tele about 40 meters up to the pin. And I think that was uh, a layup play there. I don't think she was trying to get all the way, uh, just trying to give herself a good easy look for her three. And the Christy does it the same shot, but slightly better. She'll have an even easier time. And this is a big approach here for Kaidi. Oh, very low. She tries low. to battle through the rough of the left side. I don't think she got too far. We'll see what she's left with. But Tele is up next, so must have gotten some distance there. Very nice. There's Makes it seem so approach. easy. Yeah, she's really been nailing those ones. And Kaidi, she's going to reduce the damage here. A lot of trees in the way. And we couldn't quite see what it ended up. Looks like it's behind that tree in circle two. That will be a tough one to get for her bogey. And we'll see Anneli in a moment. Knowing that Kaidi, who she's currently tied with, is taking at best a bogey, this could be a great opportunity. She connects with a guardian as well. She will have a long look for par now. Things are heating up here. I think you can sense a little bit more. Uh, there's a palpable tension now that wasn't there earlier in the round. And Christy, knowing that she's uh, kind of out of that contention for the win, she might be feeling a bit more relaxed coming into these final holes. Just going to play her game. And we see Kaidi finally getting close. I believe that she will be putting there for her double bogey. I believe so. Some thick rough on the left. Anneli gives it the bit, I believe, off the band. Not leaving that one low. She'll have a short putt for bogey. Kaidi here for a double. And just like that, Kaidi taking a double, Anneli taking a single bogey, and Tele putting for par here. The scores will be thrown up into a mix. As you mentioned, these three players have separated a little bit from the rest of the field. Christy was sitting in fourth as we entered this back nine. She was, I believe, six strokes behind the other three. So that leaves Tele at plus two, tied with Anneli in first place. Kaidi drops to plus three. Here you see hole 12, a 106 meter par three that goes downhill and bends from the left to the right. Shaping really nicely for the turnover or flex backhand, you need to make sure to control your pace and find some fade at the end of your flight to pan out and enter this quick green. You have rough right behind, so you don't want to go too deep, but you do need to maintain a significant amount of turnover in the flight if you're playing the backhand. I think it is the best shape, and all of these players have shown that they can hit this line. This is the easiest hole on the day. Scoring 2.6.4 under average. Definitely want to pick this one up. And Taylor goes for high Anheuser, but doesn't quite get to the, the line she was looking for there. She'll have trees obstructed towards the basket. Christy now, this is looking nice as she turns this one over around the corner blind. She needs it to fade, but it doesn't quite come out of it. She turns a little bit too far right. She'll have a circle to look at birdie though, by no means a bad shot. Yeah, not bad. And uh, here's an opportunity for Anneli to retake her number one spot here. Looks solid out of the hand. Can it carry the whole way? Misses those trees. Missed those two, and she is in the circle. <laughs> A very eventful flight there. Uh, that's her comfortable putting range. Well done. 
Yeah, she really had you on the edge of your seat there. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and Kaede here, looking to follow suit. A little bit the more height, and I do like that because it will promote a fade at the end, but she catches a branch on the way. She drops yeah. uh, about 30 meters short. We'll have, I think, a simple jump putt approach, likely playing for par for Kaidi. It would be tough to run it from there going downhill. And I'm actually surprised this is playing as the easiest hole in the day. This is, does not look that simple. I thought the same when you said that. I was surprised to hear that. I don't think it was in rounds one or two. Uh, Tele with a really nice shot there to get out of the rough and put herself right up there in the green. We see Kaidi opting for that patent pending. Soft approach, also really well done. It's a, it's a blind hole. It is downhill at 106. It's a specific shape that you need to hit to make it to the green, though. So well done on all those people snagging all the birdies, putting it to the easiest hole statistically. Yeah, definitely surprising. A little pitch up there for her three. And Anneli here to go back into number one spot. She puts the center, as she's done many times this round. She has a bit of a roller coaster start to her back nine, Anneli going birdie, bogey, birdie. Tele with a good par save, given the first shot. I think best case scenario once again. She's been scrambling really well all weekend. Yeah, definitely an, imp an impressive forehand approach game. Uh, comes into use a lot in the woods, being able to uh, reach out from the tree line and uh, shape something down the fairway. Very useful skill to have, as we see Katie here getting her three as well. Katie with the pep in her step, ready to move off this hole and on to the next. Meet Pure. The most modern disc golf bag in the universe. Join the Pure family today. Pre-sale at puredisc.net. A lot of hype behind that bag, and it's not even out yet. Go check him out at pure.net as we go into hole number 13 here. And hey, we might be joining the Pure family as well. Who knows? Hole 13, <laughs> par 3, 108 meters. A very tricky hole as it looks straight, softly bending to the left, but really requires a precise line. Likely a soft flex or long fighting hyzer. You'd definitely rather crash this tree line on the right than the left as the green slopes right to left and very hard packed. Any hyzer angle that comes into the screen may take the exit ramp down the hill. This is one that not sure if you'd consider it a bonus birdie, but really requires good precision. It's right in the middle of difficulty, uh, scoring just below par. Uh, definitely one at this point in the round you want to pick up. The shape is not all too demanding. Um, the green is a bit sloped and there can be a lot of ground play issues. But Anli with a solid shot there. Yeah, really nice. I think the exact line you're looking for, that fighting hyzer, may be slightly up to flat, but you don't really want to turn it right too much. Tele with a slow release, high speed disc. Oh, an unfortunate little mound there that she connects with. Spins her out just a touch. She'll come up short, but also with an open look at her birdie. Yeah, I thought that was going to slide up right into the basket, but you can never truly trust the ground play in the woods. There's a lot of roots and pines, pine cones and such. Um, so you can't trust it too much uh, as Christy goes a bit too far right there, overturns her disc. Kaidi here, looking to keep up her competitors. She walks it down, perhaps out of frustration or confidence. I'm not sure, um, but uh, she she got out of the woods there, so she'll have a look still. But you can't An see the power downhill move either way. Yeah, no doubt. I do I do respect it. <laughs> Christy floats on over the top. She'll be putting back uphill. And it's an interesting hole because a lot of shots tend to end a little bit short where you then are putting downhill and it's tough to give it a confident bid. Like from here, obviously, she just needs to try and throw a close approach. There's that quick green that we mentioned. She'll be left with a tester. We see Tele here, a little bit more lateral on the hill. Oh, she tries to find her birdie. She finds the band 
and will be left with a five meter putt for her three. This is Anna Lee, currently in the lead. She has a bit of a high putt there. There were some branches in the way. She taps in for par. I will say great confidence by Tele with this quick green. She still goes for it when she's outside the circle. And big putt for Kaidi here. And just on the outside there. You really want to stick it in the middle of these prodigy baskets. And cool. that will be her bogey from there. And what a cool shot there as you saw Tele right behind these players, watching them line up their putts. Every stroke defining the final positions now. Tele walks up and puts in her par putt. You see her take a breath there. The smile's now beginning to fade as the stress increases, holes are running out. Christy with a short putt for her bogey, Kaidi as well. Yeah, and Kaidi is going to want to put a move on on these remaining holes. She put herself back two from her competitors. And she'll want to fight back here as we move on to the horseshoe. Yeah, hole 14 is an interesting one. 170 meter par four. You need your disc to go right, right, and right again. You have that mando tree that we just passed, cutting off any shortcuts or errant shots off the tee. You need to make sure to push the straight shot, fade right. If you can, get a long straight look to the basket on your second throw, where you'll need to throw a softly left to right shot. Try to slide on up. Very technical hole that requires, if you have it, the big forehand off the tee, and then a backhand turnover, I think, the most natural shape on the second shot. But one that players really find themselves in a different spot each time they play it. So tough to really have a same landing point each time. I think this hole really favors Anneli's game here. She's got a strong forehand. Gives a good shape. I'm not sure if she'll get quite enough distance there. She's a bit pinched by that pine tree there. Let's see what Tele, Tele's forehand is saying. A bit higher, hyzer. And I think that it's funny that the best shots on this hole look sawed off, but considering that you need to go right the entire way, you can see that is a perfect result. She might still have a left to right shape to get to the tee, but to the basket rather, but that is a really nice spot to be. Christy now shaping a soft flex, nice and high to ensure she gets a big fade. And as she pushes the back there, not a bad spot either. Likely has a chance to still find the birdie. And this is a bit burnt down. She gets a solid skip though. And she will still be have that approach for her birdie. But I think she's a bit cut off by the trees on the right. Yeah, the low burner there with the forehand. Good fortunate skip to get some extra distance. I think we saw a similar result for round two from Kaidi, and she still chose to get aggressive, finding some trouble. Interested to see if she wants to fight around that corner given her position. Anneli with a great shot there. Christy here turns her disc a little bit. Can she fight through? I think she caught some trees in the center fairway there. And Kaidi is up next. And that was, she, I think she had four trees in the span of one second there. Yeah, and she did go for that aggressive line, as you saw. She needs the strokes now. Three behind Anneli, who's currently holding the lead. Tele with a beautiful tee shot, gives her this open look to the green. And, and she oh my almost goodness. skips it in. That is a perfect execution of that upshot. Stone cold and came just at the right time. I will say her composure is impressive to say the least right now as this is usually when you start to see uh, people get very nervous to start making making mistakes but uh, some people just have that clutch gene and when they really want it they start to perform and this is Kaidi for her approach shot and I believe she's getting a double bogey there she got caught up quite a few times. Christy with a short upshot as well. She'll look to be taking her par. <clears throat> Anneli here, choosing to just give it a little touch up shot there. No problem. That will be for her par as well. Currently sitting in the lead. Tele looking like a sure birdie. 
That will tie them up if Tele can put this one in. Just like that, really nice shot off the tee and the second. Tele with all the tools to find that birdie. Yeah, it's impressive because she doesn't bust out the forehand too often, but the few times she's done it, it's looking great. So impressive to see that she has all the tools here. She doesn't have that forehand approach, but I'm talking about uh, off the tee. Tele tool seller? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I appreciate that. Kaidi. I was going to say no comment, in. but uh, yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, thank you. Kaidi takes the unfortunate bogey as the scores continue to separate. We are here on hole 15, only four holes remaining. This is a 130 meter par 3 that provides you a lot of options. There's the right gap of these initial trees offering you the hyzer, the left gap for the big Anheuser or Sky Roller. If you're a crazy person, you can try and play right down the middle. A lot of players will just try to pump as much distance as they can up there into the green. This is one that if you don't have the distance, you're likely just playing for three because there's not much reason to risk it. There's OB on that left side if you try to throw the big Annie and fade out too soon. So I think a lot of these players will opt for that right side gap. Play the hyzer to about 90 to 110 meters and then take the short upshot. Yeah, with the uphill at 130 meters, this is definitely some elite distance and for both FPO and MPO. And you can understand why most of the field taking a par here. As long as you make, make it past those trees, you'll have a fairly easy upshot for your three. But getting a birdie here, you're going to need to really crank one out. And we see Anli here. She holds on to her disc a bit too long, but she makes it through it. And fortunate result there. She'll have an open up shot for her three. Yeah, you saw her body language there. She was uh, very tense, thinking that she may have found the right side rough. Really not a hole that you want to take bogey on, despite the birdie being really hard. This is just a safe play. That's a great drive from Christy, right in the open. Kaida here, she's been struggling the last few holes, looking she's trying to regain her composure. Goes for high line, walks it down. Again, look at the power move, just confidence. She might be a little bit upset that she's not quite in contention with these two top ladies now. With only four holes to go, she's four strokes behind, so she would need to play lights out and require the others to fall back a little bit. But nevertheless, every stroke counts. Tele gives that upshot, fades a little bit too early, but right up there in the circle, no worries. And even though these are fairly standard upshots here, you really want to put it close this, <laughs> this close towards the end of the tournament. The more stress-free putts you can have, the more energy and power you can put into those final birdie holes. As you see Kaidi here, just leaving herself a little bit too much. Uh, she, she's definitely confident from that range. Um, but it can be tricky uh, when there's so many, so much nerves going on this late in the round. This is an important putt for Tele. Wow, that looked so good. Yeah, a right. Bit. Strong side chains, I think just a little bit too far on the right. She'll be tapping in a short bogey. Knowing Anneli is parked, she'll fall one behind. This is Kaidi now for her par. And there's definitely some holes remaining that can give you a big score. So Kaidi here, not looking to give up. She was going to want to put this in, and she does. Well done. Solid stuff as she stops the bleeding. Christy also with a great putt, both of them from that tester range. Good to see them put that one in. Hole 15, the very rare and elusive birdie. We see Anneli with a tap in par as well. Now currently sitting in that solo lead position. What Get through it, what is going on? <laughs> Holy cow, Eagle! Niklas! What just happened? 80. On a harp. He's looking really good. 
go in. Oh, oh my gosh. Whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't even 30 meters. It's giving it a chance. Get no it. Oh, way. he did it. What a no highlight way. fuck. Uh, another <laughs> okay, little showmanship. <laughs> so cool. Thank you for that. We are now here on hole 16, a 120 meter par three. This is a long straight shot that you need to shape between the trees. You have this early one on the right that you wanna go left of as the drone flies. Likely a hyzer release that flips up to flat. You wanna use a little bit of under stability to get both the distance and the straight flying shot as the fairway does not offer a lot of width to work with. Bonus points if you can miss this very last guardian and slide up into the green. This is another one that requires pretty good distance to get right up there too. This is the last proper hard hole that we have on the course. Scoring fourth hardest on the day. Uh, definitely a bonus birdie. I'm curious to see if they choose to go for it or not as Amelie has a nice shaped disc out of hand but it turns over a little bit too much there. She'll be scrambling for her three. Yeah, I think she was releasing that one on a soft Anheuser and got caught up. The, the Heiser flip up to flat and turn, I think, is the most pure shape. Christy looking to play that turnover just a little bit left side in that initial gap, finds herself in the right rough. And Kaede seeing these results, might want to go for it here. And that looks good if it gets past those trees. And it just gets caught up a little bit. She'll have a long look for birdie. I think a good kick off that tree to put her back in the center. She was fading towards some uh, obstruction for sure. So she'll be all right with that result. Big drive here for Tele. And she's going straight in the middle there. Can she get through? And another good kick. That'll be a fairly stress-free approach from there. Can probably just put it close or maybe even give it a chance. She is one behind and there's only three holes left. We'll see Christy now needing to go with an awkward patent pending stance out of the trees. She'll need to release this on Anheuser to shape it back into the middle. She catches a little bit of fade, leaves herself still with some distance but an open straight look. And I believe Anneli will be... Oh, we have Christy. Again on that left side, very similar distance to where Anneli finds herself. And she grounds it a bit early, looking to slide. Three times in a row, she gives a little soft any floater there. Puts her right next to her basket. Anneli here. Oh, significantly more distance than shown, but she hits the one last guardian tree. Tele and Kaidi had the privilege of knowing that Anneli has to go first, now have an opportunity, knowing that she has a long putt for uh, par, a very real chance of bogey with that difficult putt. They can just lay up and take a stroke on the leader. Looking like a moonshine pure from Tele here. She gives her run. A little bit low, but uh, she's right up there for her tap in and after seeing Anneli hit that tree, I think she'll be happy with that. Do you think that's a run? Um, well, based on her body English, it looks like she gave it the, the full bid, but uh, could be just be a layup as well. And we see Anneli here with an important miss there. After hitting that center tree, she'll be t putting here for bogey. And that will put her at plus two together with Tele. She misses once, but not twice. We have an even ball game here, or should I say, even this game. You may be the first person to uh, translate that phrase to disc golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said ball game, and I felt it was slightly wrong, so... You History heard it in here. the making. Yeah, you heard it here for first, folks. You coin a new phrase. Kaidi making sure to put in her par putt, still sitting at five over. The holes are running out, and I think she has accepted at this point that she is no longer playing for that first place position, so she will just keep her head high, truck along, trying to play for that third podium spot. So we see Tele take the par, and Christy with some struggles, finding a double bogey. 
Yeah, she was in the running in the beginning round. She might be feeling a little bit deflated now, not quite in the running anymore. Um, when you get in that spot, you just hope to keep fighting and do your best disc golf regardless of the score. And I think importantly, keep having fun out there. It can be easy to have the complications of tournament and competitive play get to your head, but at the end of the day, you're out there in nature playing with some of the best players in the world on a lead card. That's exciting stuff. You see here, hole 17, a 90 meter par three downhill the entire way. You need to control your landing point as you have a elevated basket to contend with. If you come up short, you're putting downhill towards it. You want to get as close as possible and ideally a little bit long of the basket, better than a little bit short, so you can at least putt back uphill. You definitely want to manage your height here. There's a the slope at the green happens quickly. And Katie really hugging that left side. She makes it all the way into circle one. I think she wanted to walk that one down, but she had to <laughs> wait for her competitors first. The problems of having the box. Taylor, important shot here. It's turning. Can I make it back? Just finds the outermost tree. And with this elevated basket and slope, it would be a real risk to run that for her birdie. Big opportunity here for Anneli. This has a good shape and height. Might be too far right side as she is also caught up in the rough. Likely also a pitch up to the elevated basket. A bit too far to run comfortably. We'll see Christy go for that forehand line now. Really is just a straight shot so you can pick which side you want to throw. And she grounds it a little bit early, doesn't get the full slide. I don't know if any of these players will be putting on their second throw. It would really be an aggressive play, but if there's a time to do it, it may just be now. I think from here for Tele, simply a layup. You do not want to take a bogey, especially with her knowing that Anneli is also not with a reasonable birdie putt. It was such a hard ground and uh, sloped. These layups are not easy. Um, there's definitely a solid base for the for the basket to stand on that you can hit. Um, but you definitely don't want to take this shot for granted. Yeah, you saw Anneli throw straight into the ground there, knowing that she'll get the slide. She didn't want any business with the height. And oh. Katie still fighting to get up on up on those first two spots. It was a good attempt, just a slightly bit low. And, and that one just make. sneaks right over. Great job. She gives the basket a bit of props there. And a small smile from Anneli. Tele needing to put this one in to maintain her share of the lead. And she does. We will be going into the last hole, hole all tied up. Fireworks here. A lot of pressure on a big drive coming up. As we see these tap-ins here for par. Exciting stuff. One hole remaining. You see it here from above the water carry of hole 18. The basket has been moved to be slightly more treacherous. Previously up on the hill, it has been moved to the flat now to bring the water slightly more into play on both the drive and the putt. Sitting at 110 meters, depending on how aggressive you get on the tee shot, it's about 95 or 100 to get to dry land. A big swinging hyzer if you have the power, or a soft hyzer flip or flex if you want to really push the distance. Just a really nice thematic hole on the last one. Definitely one you can get a birdie on. And as we're all tied up, both Tede and Anneli will be looking to seal the deal. But Kaidi up first. Goes for a high hyzer here. She definitely has the power to put it close with that kind of shot, but ended up in C2. I want to say, and big important shot here for Tele. How much risk is she going to take to put it close? Power Look. hyzer. It has the height to fade left. She pushes the distance, sticks the hill, 
A great shot to ensure that she is safe just outside the circle, putting for birdie. And that's not an easy putt from there. Big opportunity for Anneli here to put it close. And oh, that is looking early, early left. Early release, yeah. A lot of hyzer angle comes out a bit early. She did not hang it out to that right side. She crashes the hill nice and safe. That'll be a long look for her birdie. And with such long putts here, we might be looking for a playoff. Don't want to speak too soon. We'll see how it comes down. As uh, Taylor definitely has a putt. Anneli is deep C3, I want to say. But she runs it. But yeah, hard to get that distance. She'll have a tap in three. Christy laying that one up as well to the ground. About five meters remaining. As we'll and get all to the Taylor, pressure on. If she can Tournament make on the line. Oh, and if she made it, she would have found the solo lead. But she hits the cage. Kaidi with a solid birdie to end her back nine. She had some struggles in the middle, but there you go. Holes 10 and 18, finding her birdies. A great performance from her throughout the weekend. Yeah, great finish for her. She'll take the solo third spot for a tournament, which is a great performance. Only here. Needing to make this putt for par. Low out of the hand. She hits the cage and falls, meaning that this putt from Tele is what she needs. Anneli just tapping out, finishing her round. If Tele can make this putt, she can be from a qualifying event your EPT champion of the Estonian Open. And it is in! Does it? Wow. What impressive performance. She had great composure all around. She nailed her putts, had great upshots all around. She had a bunch of bullseye putts or th drives throughout the weekend. And you can see how much it means to her here in her home country. And I believe her first significant win in the eight years. What an incredible moment for her to qualify in the tournament, play with the best players in the world and secure that win. Really incredible stuff. Well done to Tele Tumsalu, your 2023 Estonian Open champion. Yeah, that was a beautiful performance. That's a great way to start your career off uh, in disc golf. And uh, yeah, as I said, her PGGA ratings must be skyrocketing after this event. Uh, so that's beautiful to see. Well done to all the competitors. Thank you everyone for joining us and catch us at the next event. Thank you, Johan, and to all of you viewing. We appreciate your support and we'll catch you at the next one. Bye-bye.